All right, now let's talk about the application of multiple regression model in R. So as we talked about it in the very last slide of the previous video, it's super simple. You know, we just simply need to uh, save the regression in an object, let's call it MRM, and then we can call the summary function on that or Stargazer. Okay, so let's begin. We're gonna load the libraries, World Region Stargazer, and let's look at the head of the data set. So this is our wage one data set. We have wage, education, experience, tenure, you see, lots of interesting variables now. So again, we, we, we like multiple regression model a lot more than simple regression because, you know, we can control for many variables. In this example, you know, we have a bunch of variables, we can control for all of them, right? But uh, in order to be consistent with this slide, let's simply control only the first two one, education and experience. So what's the model? Wage on education and experience. We use a plus to add the two, simply add the two. This is the data set. So if I run this line, there's going to be a new object, object called MRM. And uh, now we can call the stargazer on that object. And this is the output, right? So um, this is basically what we generated in the last slide. Regressing wage and education, experience and constant. So let, let me actually quickly interpret a couple of them. So we say if education increased by one unit, which happens to be years, and holding explicitly, holding experience constant, then wage on average is going to increase by 64 cents per, per hour. Okay, does that make sense? Maybe, maybe, maybe yes, maybe not, but at least the sign is correct. It's positive. You expect it to, the sign to be positive and that's the case. What about, how do I interpret this number? Again, this is level level, so there is no percentages. So we, we, we call it unit unit. If we say, if experience increased by one unit, which again happens to be years, then holding education explicitly constant, then on average, wage is going to increase by 0 0.7, which is seven cents, right? And constant is negative. So can I interpret it? Of course you can. So it says that, if education and experience is zero, then the wage is going to be negative. But does that make sense here? No. So the problem is that, again, uh, in simple regression model, we were not interested in uh, interpreting the intercept at all. In multiple regression model, we start uh, believing in that intercept because, especially if you control for more exponential variable. Here, we are only controlling for two. Maybe it's not enough. So that's why this number, again, even though it's significant, we're going to talk about the significance later on, but even though it's significant, we should not read too much into it, so be careful. R square, 22.5%, it means that education and experience collectively, this is important, education and experience collectively are able to explain 22.5% var uh, of variation, variability in wage in the data set. All right, let's continue. Uh, let's look at the... Uh, multiple regression model R square and correlation. Do you remember that we had five different ways in simple regression model, five different ways to calculate this R square? I said that one of them doesn't work for multiple regression model. Which one was that? When R square was equal to correlation of X and Y to the power of two or Y and X to the power of two. Here doesn't make sense. Why? Why do you think it doesn't make sense? Because which X are we talking about? Am I talking about education? Am I talking about experience? So for that reason, you can imagine that the equation is not gonna hold. And let's, let me actually show it to you. So this is the one that works. So the R square was equal to correlation between Y, this is my Y, right, wage, and Y hat, this is Y hat, to the power of two. So if I calculate, if I run this line, what I get, I will get this number, 22.5 or 0.225, let's see. See, 0.225, again, we're rounding up here. So that's the answer. And guys, you can extract that R score specifically from your object MRM. You know, I have a summary. If, if I do summary MRM, you'll see the uglier version of the output, right? But the cool thing with this summary function is that you can extract, you know, lots of things here. We, we have talked about this. So I can extract the coefficients. I can extract the R score itself. So what is the code? That's, this is the code R square. Uh, if I use dollar sign R square. So if I run this line, again, I get 
0.22 but we don't do we don't do it like this maybe in the course we usually use the table and read the r score from the table but just i just put it here in, in for your reference okay what's the important point the important point is that r square is equal to correlation of y and y hat to the power of 2 but in multiple regression analysis is not equal to correlation between y and x so let's say calculate the correlation between y wage and x let's let's look at the education to the power of 2 if i run this line of course it doesn't make sense it's 16 it's not equal to 22 uh, and the reason is that which which uh, x are we talking about is it education is it experience either one it's not going to work okay i get a different number okay. again you cannot simply add the two and think that you know the summation is going to be this because uh, it's just slightly different if i look at any of them individually i'm looking at simple regression model simple regression model i'm not controlling for two uh, education and experience at the same time in one model so that's why i cannot simply and you should not be careful you should not simply add these two numbers and call it it's going to be equal to 22. so for that reason we're going to completely ignore this line in multiple regression analysis but for your reference i put it here and uh, in the in the file it's uploaded on canvas it's called class 11 mrm you'll see this be careful you cannot use this in uh, let me actually write some code so you cannot use this formula for multiple regression model. All right. Okay. Now let's quickly look at different functional forms uh, in R uh, for multiple regression analysis. Let's say let's say we have three models. I call them MRM one, MRM two, MRM three. The first one uh, is actually is our simple regression model wage versus education right this is the first one the second one is multiple regression model why it's multiple because i have two exponents over one we are regressing wage on education and look at that this is education square so how do i write education square as a variable as a separate variable into the model you have to use this i function it's a function remember i comes with open close parentheses so if you want to do education to the power of two, so you have to say I open close friend and then write education. If you don't do that, then R is going to simply add this education, education square and treat it as one variable. But remember, this is multiple regression model. We have to treat them separately. Education is one variable. Education square is another variable. How do you tell to R that this is separate variable? You put an I, you use I function. So this is model number two. Model number three is our friend log wage versus education. Okay, so the goal of this exercise is to see which one is which model is going to do a better job. Okay, again, this is simple regression model. This is simple regression model using log transformation. This is multiple regression model using quadratic version. Right. So let's run the three lines. One, two, three. Now all of them are loaded already. Now let's look at the output, the stargazer, and again. Uh, the beauty of this stargazer is that I can look at the, all the three models you know, close to each other. So this is the three models. So in model number one and two, we are regressing wage on something. Model number three, we are regressing log wage on something, right? So model number one, again, for some of them, there is no coefficient here. So this is how you read a, a table like this. Model number one, regressing wage on education, not education square, but the constant. So education and constant. Model number two, education on, uh, sorry, wage on education and education square. Model number three, you know, log wage versus, uh, log wage versus education and a constant. If I compare the models, so I look at R square. So R square, again, later on, we're gonna look at adjusted R square, but for now, because we haven't introduced you to the adjusted R square, let's stick to this one. R square 16.5, 20%, 18.6. So it seems that, again, if I only want to judge based on R square, it seems that this model number two, it's better than model number one and two. Do you remember, you know, we had a data, we believe that, you know, the wage versus education was quadratic, something like this. I told you that we have two ways to fix that. Either use the log, tra log transformation to bend the data, again, hypothetically bend the data or use a quadratic model use multiple regression model to literally fit the line sorry bend the fitted line 
uh, make it curve instead of just simple line. So it happens to be in this case, it's, it's a better exercise. Instead of doing a log transformation, maybe using the quadratic one, not maybe here, it's a fact, it was a better one. But that's not necessarily true for any other models that we deal with. So at the end of the day, you put 10, 20, well, nowadays with computers, we use thousand different of combination between all the things that you can imagine here. And then ask computer which one was the best one and you will get the answer. All right, now, okay, we haven't talked about perfect collinearity, so this is a topic for our class number 12, so I will stop here.